in this module we shall look at some of the sharia issues in ijara we have looked at quite a number of applications of ijara in islamic capital market in islamic investment fund management industry in islamic retail banking even we looked at uh, aircraft uh, financing based on ijara and we looked into a very innovative structure based on service ijara in uh, however there are quite a number of uh, general issues sharia related issues when we are dealing with ijara as an islamic mode of finance there are certain rules which govern lessor and lessee there are certain rules which are actually related with the leased asset and there are rules governing rental rules governing ownership and liability so whatever be the application of ijara in the context of islamic banking and finance we must observe these rules otherwise the use of ijara in these contexts may be questionable we actually in one of the previous modules we referred to the rules governing lessee and lessor and we said that for the lessor and the lessee i e the transacting parties to a lease contract it is not necessarily a requirement that they should be sharia compliant or they should be muslim and we gave some examples so it is possible for uh, a bank to enter into an islamic bank to enter into a lease agreement with the, a corporation which is predominantly owned by non muslim and it is also possible for an islamic bank to provide financing to a company which is sharia compliant although this is owned by a casino what do, what do i mean by that you know there is a gambling betting company it's a group level company but it owns a shopping mall somewhere in manchester in that shopping mall there are no sharia repugnant activities and if that uh, shopping mall is looking for financing from an islamic bank this should be permissible there are rules governing the leased asset the leased asset actually should not be put into the sharia repugnant use and that asset itself should be sharia compliant as well and i gave uh, an example for example if uh, there is a machine which is exclusively used for draw in case of uh, a lottery now this is not permissible for an islamic bank to buy that draw machine and lease it to this uh, uh, gambling company so this asset itself although this is just a machine but its use would make this asset sharia repugnant as well and of course the use as we said that should not be uh, acceptable uh, if there are some haram activities going on now there are before we go to the rules governing rental i must emphasize on the mixed activity and this is something which a lot of islamic banks and financial institutions face in the real world so there was an islamic bank which was looking into buying a big property a tower in central london the ground floor of that uh, tower was actually occupied by a high street bank an interest based bank now the bank wanted to buy that property and that lease with the bank was i think for 17 years or more so if the bank islamic bank had bought that uh, had bought that uh, property 
it would have inherited that tenant with it. So the issue was, is it possible for an Islamic bank to rent its property to an interest-based bank? The answer is no. However, a compromise solution was accepted whereby it was uh, deemed Sharia compliant to buy the property if the share of the rental of uh, coming from the bank in all the rental, total rental of the tower was less than 5%. Actually, this happened to be the case and it was decided that for the period, 17 years or so on, that amount of the rental would be purified from the income coming from that tower. So, there are well-defined rules governing this kind of investment and of course, these are related with leasing or ijara. Now, rules governing rental, ijara actually allows the users of ijara to come up with flexible return. This is very important. So, it is once in case of a sale, once I have sold something to someone for a price, I cannot change the price. In case of ijara, the ijara rentals can be reviewed on a frequent basis, on a quarterly basis, on a six monthly basis, or an annual basis. There are rules governing ownership and liabilities. Of course, the asset is owned by the lessor. Strictly speaking, this is the responsibility of the lessor to buy the insurance cover, the kaful cover, and it must maintain the asset for the duration of the lease period. If it doesn't, then it must compensate the lessee if the lessee is made responsible for these activities. 